the dentists and the dental care professionals. Now, one of them is, is the unity for the dentists all over the world to work dentists or dental care professionals, dentists in the UK. You have this opportunity. If you want to get more information about them, you can just email to info at kbac.uk. And yes, um, so this is a kind of a master's program in the UK. So you will be able to work in, in the UK as a dentist after this program. So I don't want to take your time too much. If you are interested, please just email us and uh, let's follow us on our social media accounts and subscribe to our newsletter uh, for the future events, for future trainings for you. Then I would like to thank to the Saramka, our sponsor for this training, and especially to Professor Esra, the one of the uh, main specialists in restorative and cosmetic dentistry um, in her area. So this will be the third event, and it will be really, it's, it's like we are uh, making a Hollywood movie. We are using too many cameras at the same time, and then we have the participants, I'm very excited we have the patient and we don't we don't make our patient impatient now so i'm just leaving the camera and leaving the microphone and everything to you then thank you thank you so much again good afternoon everybody and this is the third part of our training program today we have a live passion yes also it's a little it's a little exciting for me because it's it's the first time to make a composite vinyl restoration on a live passion in an online program also for me. Also, my passion is my PhD student. She's more excited than me <laughs> and she's waiting for me. Uh, but before the opera operation, I would like to talk about rhythm plan and the presentation but little presentation about treatment plan and about the details of my patient. And now I would like to share screen, sorry. I think, Can you see my slides? Yeah, we can see. Okay. I'm sorry, Professor, just before starting, can we just remind the participants that they can write their questions to the bottom right side, Q&A side. You can just write down your question there. And at the end of the session, your questions will be uh, answered by the Professor. Let me leave in again. Hello, is that any problem? I think so. Yeah, I, I think I think Professor has been frozen. So mm -hmm. yes, if yeah. you have any any question at the end of the session, um, you you can ask. Um, you will it will be answered. So on the bottom right side, you will see Q and A. Please don't write to the chat box as we may miss there. You can write there, but we may miss it. Miss it. So on the bottom uh, right side, there is an Q a Q&A part. You can write all questions there. And at the end of the session, um, it will be answered by, the, by Professor Esra. Then I would like to, when we are waiting the arrangements, as mentioned, we are now we have one, two, three, um, four, four, five, almost five uh, places at the moment. So it's not easy to organize all of them. Then I would like to take this opportunity if uh, Dr. Blunt allows me uh, when we are waiting for the yeah. professor, just give more information about working in the UK. So, but I didn't do this intentionally, I must say it. 
So yes, you, you can work in the UK as a dentist. If wherever you are graduated, it doesn't matter any kind of any country. And then if you are dentist qualified, then you will be able to work here, but not directly. You need to pass some exams and you need to prepare for this. And we are arranging all those uh, process procedures for you. And at the end, you will be able to work in, in the UK as a dentist or a dental therapist, depending on your application. And, oh, she's back. Uh, yes, <laughs> nice yes. to see you again. <laughs> Thank you so Amazing. much. I think it's yeah. about a connection problem. Uh, okay. Now, I think everything okay. And... Yes, this is the initial views of my passion. She is, 20, she is 25 years old passion. And uh, you can see the fo initial photos. This is a big smile also of my passion and nearly eight teeth are visible during big smile. Occlusion retracted photos, and we can see a class two occlusion in the left side, in the right side. And this is the occlusion view. We can see the position of the anterior teeth and also old restorations. Uh, yes, when we evaluate the gingival symmetry, there's a problem in gingival symmetry. So we refer to our patient to departmental periodontology, but they just make a little touch because of the insufficient free gingiva. And also, unfortunately, there was a relapse uh, in this treatment within three months. So uh, now we don't decide any other gingival operation. There are old restorations in that patients, and I think you can see the restorations on maxillary incisors, lateral incisors, and also on left canine. And there's a discoloration. This is probably due to the canal treatment, with canal treatment. And my patient had an um, intracoronal bleaching nearly uh, two years before, but it was relapsed again. So now uh, I don't decide to make a intracoronal bleaching to that patient. I'm gonna mask the discoloration with opacers. Then there are root canal treatments in maxillary central incisors in that patient. So I decided to make five composite, direct composite veneers on right lateral incisors, right maxillary central incisors, left central incisors, left lateral incisor, and also left canine. My patient wants clean, healthy, and natural teeth. And there's a, a small occlusion problem. Uh, I said that there's a class two occlusion in the especially right part of the patient mouth. So I won't make any change in the width or height of the restoration in that patient. And also because of my patient desire, I mean clean, healthy and natural teeth. Also I won't change the initial shade. I will use A2, A2 opaque and incisal translucent in my patient. There's a problem in midline, uh, it was shifted a little bit to left. I will improve it. And also uh, the midline is not straight. In the new restorations, I would improve the midline of the patient. I will use a substractor technique in that patient because there are old restorations. I will remove old restorations. And also uh, 0.4 millimeter preparation is indicated for central incisors in that patient, especially uh, for masking the discoloration on right maxillary central incisor. I won't make any restoration on the right, uh, right canine. 
Um, yeah, but uh, I'm not sure about uh, finish line. I will use Federage or Latroin. I will decide it after the removal of the res old restorations. And today I will make a composite veneer on lateral incisor because uh, we're gonna change one of the kind of treatment. So today we're, we're gonna just make it one restoration. Yes, this is the treatment plan of my patient. And now let's go to the dental office and start the restoration. Okay. And can you hear? I think my voice is okay now. Yes, we can hear, but if possible, okay, maybe some. And next step is shade selection. Yeah, great. Next step is shade selection. Today, we won't change initial shade and initial shade was, is A2 in that patient as you see, except for the discoloration. Then we will use A2 shades, basic shades, A2 opaque, and also incisor translucent for the restoration. Yes. After shade selection, we're gonna make a silicone index because I won't uh, change the height of the restoration, length of the restoration. So I will use the original teeth and old restorations for making a silicone index. Yes, I will take one portion from catalyst and one portion from the paste. I think that's enough. Similar amount I should take and mix them until getting a homogeneous mixture. Check the homogeneity, and I think that's enough. Then dry the two surfaces using the contaminants. That's the Asana Chan syndrome. Take the index. Put it on the, on the level surface and slow pressure, apply slow pressure, try to take it to the anterior region and turn it to the incisal area. This silicone index should include the anterior kit incisal edge, but it shouldn't turn to facial part of teeth. But don't worry, if it turns, you can remove the excess part with a scapel. Yes, I think that's enough. We don't have a 
dry surface. So in model, it's really uh, simple, but in the in the patient, we, we can uh, get difficulties in adapting the silicon index to the tooth surface because of saliva. Pay attention to get a good adaptation. Of course, we have to wait its setting. I didn't use an Eckhartor because I will apply rubber dam after this process. But if you won't use a rubber dam, you should apply an Eckhartor into the mud. Sorry. Wait until it's completely set because uh, if it is not set when you're removing it, there can be a disruption, disruption. Deform, you can deform the index. And unfortunately, uh, it can prevent the well adaptation of the silicon index. In this patient also, you can make this restoration without rubber dam isolation because the health of gingiva is good. But also I want to show you how to apply a rubber dam. So I would apply the rubber dam to canine to canine. From canine to the other canine. I think it's nearly set. But a little bit, so I have. And the other step is the application of rubber dam. Yes. What we need, we need a punch, a forceps, and clamps. I will use premolar clamps. I will attach the retainers or clamps on premolars. And then I need a dam, of course, dam sheet.
I will use the heavy sheet from Nikton. And I need a tray. Yes, first. Attach the frame to the rubber dam sheet and you have to stretch the dam well because it's a heavy one. Otherwise, there can be folded areas between tooth, between a adjacent tooth in the approximate area, especially. Okay, you can use both sides if you want uh, the one or shiny surface. All have some advantage and disadvantage. Uh, so first, I want to attach it to the frame. You have to stretch it well. Okay. That's okay, you can use a template if you want standardized template, but I won't use a template today and use the original position of tooth. I think it's okay. Remove it. Yes, I think there's no problem, but there are excessive parts in the, on the silicone index and I will remove them with a scalpel. And but I uh, I can make the last adjustment after I apply the rubber dam according to rubber dam position. Now take a pen. Take the dam. About take the dam. And sometimes they are dangerous. Okay, position the them, then stretch it well. Stretching is very important. And mark the inside the middle of incisal edge with a pen. Just it pointless enough, but from the middle part for a well positioning. Yes, I can take it. As you see, we use the original position of teeth as a template. Then punch the holes with a rubber dam punch. I will use the smallest hole for central incisors and also canines and uh, the second smallest one for, pardon, for lateral and central incisors, I use the smallest hole and the second smallest one for the canines. Uh, it's up to the width of the tooth. It's not a standard fact. Punch holes. It is strong force. I will use the second one for the canines. I generally use a small as small as possible uh, size for the holes. If I use a heavy dam, okay. Now we go use. The holes should be very clean. As you see, they're excessive materials and remove them with your fingers. If you cannot do this process with your fingers, use tweezers. Okay, remove it and remove it. Now our holes are ready and very clean. We can apply it easily. 
Then you have to apply, you have to rub a petroleum jelly or a adhesive to the surface that is close to the teeth uh, to easily pass the dam into the approximal area. I will use adhesive for this aim today, but also petroleum jelly is a good alternative for wetting the rubber dam surface. And also I'm preparing my Ferris Y yes, retainers. And yes, forceps, yes. Done. Oh, this, that's enough. Apply it onto the. You can also apply the petroleum gel onto the. Yes. Oh, sorry, sorry. This is the wrong uh, place. I can I take a piece of paper? Can I take a piece of paper? This is not the right surface. I should apply it to the surface, sorry. You should apply the surface that will be in contact with wood and you can clean it with the disinfectant, it's not important. Uh, okay. Now try to pass to them. So, do the tutorial, sure. Do the tutorial. Yes. There are old restorations. So, unfortunately, at the beginning, it's really hard to apply to pass the them through the gingivite first. Put them to the each time, the stand, and the old way. Uh, in that case, you can use a floss. That's going to do as well. Use floss to pass. How's that? But you have to use floss. In a co correct way. You cannot pass it through from the middle of the dam because it will tear the dam near the tooth surface. You have to pass the floss from near the tooth surface. I think nearly it's okay. This is a little bit also thin for the approximate area, but we passed them and then now we're gonna place the retainer onto the premolar. Hold the forceps. Now it's okay. And apply the dam. Okay, take another piece of dental tape. This is the critical point. Pass the dam through the contacts. Yes. Okay. And apply the other retainer to the premolar, sorry. <laughs> okay. 
Şimdi takalım iyi mi? Daha fazla takalım. Can yanıyor mu? Biraz. Change the position. Şu anda nasıl? Daha iyi değil mi? Daha iyi nasıl? Tamam. Okay. We place the them sheet to onto the tooth. And then the next step is inversion of the rubber dam sheet. We're gonna first start from interapproximal area and then facial lingua. Bana da ne misin? Bana da ne misin? Old restoration sometimes can be a problem. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Daha önce bir ip var mı acaba Mustafa Bey? Bu biraz daha kalın. Başka bir ışık var mı? Silahım. Yeni perden bir şey değiştirdim. Önce. This is a little bit thick. So you can encounter some problems with thick one. Okay, then we're gonna inverse it. Also, use your composite spatula, or you can use also different hand instruments for the same. I generally prefer comp composite spatula. Yes, this is the inversion of them in the facial surface. We finished it. And we're gonna do it also in the palatal surface. You can use a small mirror, mouth mirror, or this big mirrors. This is mirror for photograph. Taking the photos, you can use them for immersion. As you see, there's some coding areas and also old restoration. So in that case, immersion is not easy especially in some places i need a tin floss and i'm waiting for a tin floss Today, I think that's nearly enough. Uh, because I'm today, I'm gonna just work on the lateral incisor, this one. So I think this enough. Uh, okay. My rubber dam is ready. And I will use the anterior clamps or retainers for retracting tooth that I will study on. This is B4 clamp. And I will use this clamp to retract the gingiva and also to um, also stabilize the dam uh, on this tooth. Okay, I will use this, but after the preparation, I will use it. Okay, now it's okay. You can clean the rubber dam also with a disinfectant. Are you okay? Olur, dezenfektin, kloristin de olur. Now it's time for the preparation. I will remove the old restoration. 
its color match is very well, so it's really hard to distinguish it with visible eye, with naked eye. Uh, but in photos, we could clearly see the old restorations. So for the tiny room for this one. The Okay, now we're gonna remove the old restoration today. No. After the removal of old restoration, I would decide the finish line, inside the finish line. Okay. Section and the from the surface with a high speed under the water spray. Color mat is very well, so it's really hard. I have missed an assignment. I don't know. Hmm? Well, okay. mm -hmm. uh, come on, I'm sure. Come. About eight minutes. Four minutes. Then it's controlled to send one a survey. I would just take an audio for me. Is it the section? Yes, now we are removing the old restoration. Uh, it's Large, it's a large old restoration on the mesial surface of tooth. Uh, but we need a small doors. Teşekkür ederim. Sabun çok büyük. Daha küçüğü var mı? Ne küçük bir şey. Şunun gibi. Şu, şu köşede. Evet, evet. Daha küçük gibi. Tamam. Burada devam edebiliriz. Var, varsa bir tane daha alabilirim. İhtiyaç olabilir. Aproksim halde olduğu için. Bu sadece bu isim değil mi? Daha küçüğü var. Burada mı? Hocam, ne anlayamadım? Peki, tamam. Peçete. Peçete. Tamam. Bir daha. Bir peçete alabilir miyiz? Hocam. Eline mi? Yan taraftan, yan taraftan akıyor hocam diğer tarafına. Bu taraf mı? Evet. Evet. Tamam. 
Ben adapte edemedim ama şu küçük öğreneyim bile. Tamam. Okey. Hadi abi. Her zaman aynısı. <gülüyor> Önemli değil. Çok cool sorusu. Artık ne yapıyorum? The orchestration. Try to keep the enamel tissue. Just to do composite on facial size. It's a very large restoration, as you see. There is a liner on the surface close to the part, but I won't remove it because there is no there is no any sign of secondary carriers. Uh, I will just uh, make a bevel to remove the, this. Distinguished line, cavity wall. It's a, a kind of plus four cavity. In that case, uh, you have two options. You can make a class four restorations, but uh, you can also 
finish the class four restorations on facial surface as a, a composite laminar veneer to especially increase the adhesion area. Okay. It's not a classical direct veneer restoration uh, because in classical direct veneers, it generally makes the skin restoration. Yes. You just make some porosities on the south enamel surface and several and smooth the transition of this wall. Okay, now that's enough writing. Let's now, our sheet is ready for the restoration. Check for sharp cavity walls or uh, angles. Yes, there is a sharp place on the gingival margin. Uh, I'm, uh, I will try to round it because it will prevent the pa uh, passage of my mattress band probably. So I will smooth it with a disc. Let us see it. Biraz böyle düşüklüğüne gidebilir miyiz acaba böyle? Biraz daha düşüklüğüne. Ben de kullanması gerekiyor. Ne unuttum diyordum ki sizden.
section. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, then I have to design, uh, decide the inside the finish line. I will use the federate technique in my passion. I won't make a reduction in the incisors area, just I will thin the incisal part, facial incisal part section of the video. Okay. I will use this part as a palatable wall. Yes, that's okay. Yes. Now my cavity is ready. Um, then, as you see, the one our palatal, our silicon index is large, and I have to remove the excessive parts to adapt them well to the tooth and check its adaption. There's no problem. Yes, remove the excess parts with a scalpel and now check the adaptation. Yes. This will be better. Uh, there is a little, a little, a little bit clothing. Uh, I think um, overhang restoration uh, through the palatal area. So there is a problem in the adaptation. Um, I will use this band insist, instead of uh, silicone index. I use the patient's old restorations, but as you see, there is a gap here. And this will be a overhang in the palatal area uh, because
Now there is the tweezer. I'm looking for the tweezer. Yes, tweezer. Take a piece of kesebilir miyiz? Then Teflon band. Okay. Apply it to the approximate surface of central incisor and one more. Okay. Smooth its surface and apply it to the can I? I think that's okay. Now apply the acid. Edge gel onto the surface. I will use universal adhesive. So just edge the enamel surface. I have enamel surface. Uh, I want to edge the planting surface. Check the surface. Okay. There's a little, little venting. Shoot. Okay. This one. You have to edge the whole surface, it's really important. Okay. Apply the acid chair to whole. Asite almak için enjektör nüshesi Mustafa. Evet, evet. The manufacturer in, in this adhesive system recommend, recommends nearly 30 minutes acid application also for selective acid, but in general, we use 10 to 15 seconds if there's no other manufacturer recommendation. Carefully clean the surface with a water spray. There shouldn't be any remnant. It's important because acid shell can produce some salts on the tooth surface that are invisible. These salts unfortunately can prevent the adhesion of functional monomer in the adhesive systems. Very good. Okay, I think that's enough, that's enough. Check the sources, the sources, and we can see whitish areas because of the acid. Yes, now adhesive application. Uh, the surface should be dry or wet when you use universal adhesives. It's the one of advantage of universal adhesive. It doesn't, it, it is not affected from the wetness of tooth surface. Okay. Apply it to full surface, carefully, gently. Don't miss any untouched, unapplied surface. 
try to take to them to the gingiva. Yeah. Siz arkadan tutabilirim. Onu arkadan tutarsanız bu benim görmemde kolaylaşıyor. Diğer şöyle şu tarafını şöyle tutabilirim. Azap nasıl açar mısın canım? Okay. According to manufacturing instructions, wait 20 seconds. You can rub it in self facial basis. And this is important. Apply the air spray until there is no movement on the surface. It means that you remove all solvents from the adhesive system. As you see now, there is no fluid movement on the surface, but the surface is very shiny. That's all. Hmm. İki tane iki çift eldiven alabilirim. Evet, bu şimdi. Ben bu Tamam. Apply the light in the vertical way direction. Close to the tooth, but not touch to the tooth because it will produce heat. Evet. And also you have to apply the light green unit from the palate side. Listen, didn't you? Yes. Oh. 20 seconds is a manufacturer recommended period for this adhesive system as a light curing period. And now we're gonna make the palatal wall. You have different choices. You can use a, a flower composite and also a universal traditional composite for making a palatal wall. I'm gonna use a enamel uh, standard shade, gold shade for this aim for palatal wall. And unfortunately, I couldn't use my index. I will use a Mylar strip, but first I'm gonna remove the teflon bands because sometimes, unfortunately in the clinic, uh, I can 
deform or fracture the palatal wall. Then I remove the Teflon band after the application of palatal wall. So uh, in this case, I will remove it before creating a palatal wall. If you have difficulty, you can also use Okay. Okay. Okay. Apply your band. Yes. Adapt it to the soup surface well. Then, take a small piece of A2. There's a lot of light here. Okay. Biraz daha ışık alabiliriz. Çok az daha ışık. Biraz ışık alabiliriz. Işık. Evet, evet. Çok az da. Şu alaletini alabilir misin? Siyah, Hangisini... siyah spatula. Siyah spatula. Evet, küçük yok. Onun yerine. Bir de kompozit fırçasını alabilir miyim şurada? Okey. Kompozit fırçasını alır. Biraz daha şey olabilir mi? Kompozit. Biraz daha kompozit. Okay. No, I think it's okay. This is a different alternative to make a palatal wall. But silicon uh, index is the best technique because 
uh, in this technique you can arrange the thickness easily but you cannot control the thickness in this technique and there's a little bit crowding so it's really hard to reach this area in a proper way Biraz daha kompost alalım. Tamam, sertleştirebiliriz bu seferi. Hmm, yes, it's really it's a little bit uh, thick, but it's not important because uh, we don't make very translucent areas in that case, as we use the incisal third as a palatal third, because it's the original tooth of the patient. Uh, then uh, we're gonna uh, go on with the approximate surfaces, and we're gonna also fill some gaps uh, here. Uh, after we apply a mattress, ma metal mattress to that area. The main problem in this case is the crowding, some small crowding position abnormality between the central incisor and lateral incisors. Now we're gonna use the Unica mattress Yes. Okay, as you see, we applied the Unica mattress band and then uh, I will stabilize it with the help of weights, small weights. Hmm. 
Okay, yes. Now its position is good. It stabilizes it. Contact area is the in the normal. It starts uh, from near the middle one third, from the beginning of the middle one third, and then I will apply the second matrix band. Now I also stabilize it. Check its adaptation, sorry, especially. Yes, very good adaptation in the cervical area. And also, you can also improve its adaptation with an application of small resin material if you want. It's light curing. It's a light curing resin. Generally, we use them in white elevation process. Also, such kind of resins we use. Okay. Now it's time to make approximate walls. Also, I'm going to use A2 shade. There's some. This was it. There are small gaps, and also I will fill them with A2. Customs first. Make sure. Ben evin dediyseniz çok yakın yakın. Biraz ışık alabilir mi? Yok hayır. Görmeyiz. <gülüyor> Try to address its thickness, its height, especially. Yes, good, very good. Now, always try to use sponge and sponge and also composite brush. Now I will change the direction of my mattress band position now proper. Uh, We can light cure it now. Let's start to switch. Okay. Now check the surface. Okay, no problem. Then 
move through the cer cervical area. Try it carefully to the cervical area. And then turn to the Yes, the compost. Smooth the surface. Take the excessive material. From all surfaces. That's okay. And we can let you read. Check if there is a gap. Yep. Okay. Now, let's do it again. Remove the first vex. Then select the, the yes, it's ready now. I need an exploder. Okay. Now also I produce a frame. Mm -hmm. 
this is a little bit short, by, but I can adjust this during the application of the last layer. Now, mm, I will apply the dentin trade because there is a dentin loss in the medial part of the restoration. So I have to apply that dentin trade. I'm going to use A2 opaque as a dentin trade in that case. I'm just getting a piece of dentin shape. This is A2 opaque. Apply it to the whole surface first. Uh, in this part, if you plan to make a mammalon, you can make some little mammalons. But in this case, we use the bedridge technique. This is the enamel of the patient, distal part, and mesial part is the A2. So we just make Small mammals.
Okay, light cure. Sorry, take the excessive composite from the palatal surface. Like this. If you want also, you can make a small halo. To the incisor edge. Planting a little. And for halo. You can use and also and her shade. This is an halo. Uh, and before the application of uh, enamel shade onto the surface, you can also apply a translucent shade into the mammalons to be more evident, to, to make them more evident. I will use incisal translucent. I will close the gaps between the mammals with the hand hole to this incisal shade to prevent the fill of A2 shade into these areas when I'm applying the A2 shade and the whole surface. Okay. It's okay. Malcolm Bond was a good 
Hagen maddesi var mı olabilir mi? Hayır. Hmm. Yok. Bu değil de bir metal bant. Böbrek, böbrek. Böyle ama tofum ayar maddesi var mı? Tofum ayar maddesi hocam burada. O da olmuyor. Tamam. Olur mu? Olur, olur olur. O arada ben de yine şey deneyim. Tamam. Bir şey bu. Şeffaf bu. Tamam. Tamam. Tamam. O bana lazım. Tamam. I need a metal band here, yes. Okay, this is very important. Check the contact area because I will apply the last shade and especially cervical area by applying A2. Take a large piece of A2. Okay. Oraya geçmem lazım. Siz isterseniz şöyle geçin. Şöyle hastanın. Aynen aynısı. Ekranı yerine gitmiyor Tamam. Ben şöyle bir bakayım. Tamam. 
Mm. Unfortunately, lead curing units can affect the composite resin. Yes, you can. Still, it's nice for the memories. Belki de şundan bir tane alabilir miyim? Şundan. Bon. And then we will light cure it. It's a little, a, little, a little bit A2. Yes. Maybe I'll just come. Set this to you. And then we're gonna finish <clears throat> the facial surface with just recent shade.
ったんだよ That's all. This is one of you. Finished. So we should change the sound. We should have one more. Yes. Okay, so we finished. Should have finished. Yes, we can light pure on the facial surface. 
And by this way, we finished the facial surface. Now there's some gaps because the adaptation of palatal wall. I'm gonna apply a piece of composites and also to the palatal side because I used rubber dam and uh, because of the good isolation that provides with rubber dam, I can make any adding to any side of the composite because there's no contamination. You can fill all the gaps without applying any adhesive to the composite if you use rubber dam. Yes, apply, uh, sorry. Apply the Mailer matrix. To the approximate part. And take a piece of composite. Uh, it's better. With the help of yes, now we solve the problem in the palatinal side. There can be problems, but you have to also know how to solve these problems in the clinic. When you're making any restorations, it's okay. And the abandon of the living. Mm -hmm. Yes. Light. Yeah, light cure. Like palette, palette. From the palette side, light cure the composite resin. Now clean, clean the surface. Okay. We clean the surface. And also use another strip to remove the excessive 
composites from the approximate surfaces. Remove them. Again, you can write cure it from both palatal side and also facial side. Okay, sorry. Now we finished the restoration, but it's a little bit uh, long. And also we have to improve its location and uh, axis inclination in the finishing step. Now uh, we can go on with the finishing of the restoration. Yes. It's a little bit, it's color, I think it's okay. It's color match will be very well with the other tool, but it's a little bit uh, long and we have to also give its final shape, final length, final width in the finishing step. Okay, in finishing step, first we're gonna mm, create primary anatomy and we're gonna uh, make and determine the shape, length, and also axis of the tooth. Uh, in general, in, in the clinic, I uh, start with central incisors and also I try to give the location and the shape of the, the other tooth according to central incisors. But today I have to make this because uh, I plan to uh, replace the canal treatment of this right central incisor. So I had to start from the lateral incisor today, but I think it's not a good option. In normal cases, you have to start from central incisors. But really it's hard sometimes to find the right indication for uh, direct lami laminate veneers. And also this patient has to accept to be patient in that organization, it's really hard. You could just find this patient. <laughs> okay. Then, now I will first start from parallel side.
başka e, şu parlatma disklerinden var mıdır burada? Hayır. Bunlardan var mı ve parlatma disklerinden? Ee, bakmam lazım. Yani ben onu... Olur, olur. Çok iyi olur. Ben bu arada zaten devam edebilirim. And the length. Her, her, her renginden olabilir aslında. You can use to... You can use the palette index also to track the length. Okay, so the um, Mm-hmm. Uh, then I will also arrange the number of times. Now, okay, then, Evan, um, <laughs> and now, <laughs> okay, uh, it's time to mark the line angles. Uh, in the session, I didn't make incisal enlargements, so to show it a little bit longer, I will change its shape a little bit to triangular. Generally, Lateral incisors has a trapezoid shape, and I'm trying to give a line angle. Okay, this will the special surface of my restoration. I need now verse for low speed hand piece. Bunun devrini biraz daha düşürme şansınız var mı Mustafa Bey? Ben de şunu alayım. Ben önce daha sıkı çünkü. Evet. 
Okay. Is that any reason? Hmm. Şimdi ikleyebiliriz. Yes, nearly okay. Biraz daha düşürebilir miyiz? Devire düşür. <gülüyor> Evet. 
Biraz daha artırabilir. <gülüyor> Okey. Okay, I'm also try to make the blind angles more produce more evident with using the list. Şimdi şu alabilir miyim hocam? Bir saniye, şimdi bir, şimdi bir. Şimdi şu alabilir miyim? Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's more look like lateral incisors. Yes, okay. Uh, but when you make it more than one tooth, I advise you to make all adjustment at the end of you. You make the all millimeters. because we have to consider the position of all teeth. Okay. I think now it. It's nearly okay, but as I said before, you have to also make small arrangements, small adjustments after you finish all veneers because you have to catch the tooth to tooth portion now i think it's nearly okay now check it from also inside the surface okay Yes, its position is not so bad. Its position, its location. I have to make some small arrangements, especially in the incisal edge. There's a little. Yeah, the palatal part also needs a little touch. Okay. And. It's inside it is a little bit thick. And Yes, it's oh. there's a rounded angle. This uh, this two incisal incisal angle. It's a rounded this two incisal angle. Now it's okay, and now. Take the small excessive material from the parietal side, and then we can go on with grooves, developmental grooves. Yeah. 
as you see, there's no gap in the circle area now. And also, in the approximate part, no gap. Okay. <laughs> okay, now I think it's time to make developmental groups. As you see, yes, it says now a little bit, maybe the width is a little bit large, but uh, as I said before, uh, I will finish the patient after this program. And then, <laughs> uh, I make little change uh, in the <laughs> width of the maybe, because uh, I also uh, have to arrange the tooth to tooth portion after I finish all the restorations. But now I think there's no problem. Uh, as you can see in the approximate area, there's no gap and the composite is very well. The contact points are proper and also approximate area proper. Maybe in the cervical area, there can be small overhangs, but after removing rubber them also, uh, I can finish them. Okay. Now uh, I'm going to make because we have a limited time, I'm gonna make developmental grooves. Uh, it's up to you, up to the patient, because some patients don't like it. First, you have to ask the patient uh, and you have to show this examples uh, if you don't want to uh, smooth it after you did. It's really, I think, important step. And I asked my patient and <laughs> <laughs> she wants some developmental groups except for the development, developmental groups. Now, first, you can mark the position and the location of the developmental groups. Yes, we can make a here and also here. like this. I don't want very aggressive groove. Sorry. I'm losing it, as you see, flame blur. I will check also the thickness of incisal area as I have enough place. You have to also consider the line angles, their direction, especially in their position. As you see, they're not like a line. They're like, they're like, like a groove on the surface. That's enough. Yes. 
Sen guru. Hadi değil o kadarım yaşama. Hadi. Hadi de. Yes. Happy for small groups. And now I'm smooth it. I'm smooth them. Bit first. Rubbers and then diamond impregnated wheels. Okay, that's enough. Okay. Okay, and now I will use my disc to run the distal incisor and major incisor parts. Okay, now it's okay. Yeah, let's go with them. Let's go with them. I need the air in the air. Okay. Okay, now I think it's nearly over. Then, sorry, it's on another one. Now it's time for polishing. First, I use finishing strips for approximate surface. I will use extra fine from Epitex. Sometimes the remnants can feel, yes, can feel the interapproximal area. In that case, first remove the dust and any remnants from the inter interoproximal area then apply the strip band it's a little bit thin so it can tear easily be careful yes and use it especially under the contact area to smooth this area and then use it on the other side be careful and under the contact area you can use this we have really tight contacts.
Okay. Okay. Check the context. There's no problem. And okay. Now I will make the perkimetia, then polish full surface. By this way, we're gonna finish the restoration. Yeah, you can make this after you remove the rubber dam if you want, but we have limited time, so I'm gonna do it now. And what's the time? Sure. Do we have enough time? It's enough time. Okay, thank you so much. <laughs> okay, now I'm gonna making now I'm making the perkimetia. As you see, I'm making some lines on the facial surface, but generally I prefer to make them uh, between the line angles. I don't make any pigmentia on the approximate area. That's all. Okay. Now well, it's time for polishing. I'm used first finishing uh, the diamond impregnated wheel for finishing. Just a little touch, little touch. This is not the perikmetia. Now first, I'm gonna polish the approximate surface. Uh, as I explained it in the theoretical part, this is a silicone car carbide impregnated uh, brush. As you see, we can get very fine surface without using any case also with this system, very fine surface. And you can use them in the approximate area easily because of its shape. The shape is proper for approximate area. Okay, I think line angle is very good now. And you can see the groove. Additionally, anything and groove. You can see the groove and the perkimetia. Mm. Now it's time for using diamond impregnated wheel for polishing. First, I have to find the Okay. By this wheels, we get very shiny surface, but we have to, uh, we have a very evident fake material, so it takes a little time to polish the surface to make the shi surface shiny. But you can see the composite resin we used is very polishable, we can polish it easily. And it, the, its color is very, I think, natural. Yes, it's really easy. Okay. 
the texture is so perfect now, but the glues are uh, very clear. If you want, you can smooth them. It's up to you, your patient. There are lots of times for very time for <laughs> Its color is very similar to canine, as you see. It's a very good color mix. Like same. <laughs> yeah, like the same. <laughs> uh, nobody can distinguish uh, the color from its original one. Yes. And now it's nearly over. After you finish the Polishing, you have to take a You can check palatal side, but I want to polish the palatal side because first I have to check the occlusion, so I have to remove the dam. But I think the Facial surface is nearly finished. One more polishing. Yes, now it's very good. It's a really good result. There's no gap in anywhere and also there's no gap in the approximate surfaces we get a very good adaptation contact uh, contacts and also we get a very shiny surface the thickness of the incisal area is very proper and we can also uh, measure it with a bus its thickness uh, near two millimeter uh, it's an ideal thickness because also we use the palatal edge, the palatal uh, wall of the original tooth in the distal part, yes, as you see. Uh, but at the end, we're gonna also adjust the length and the width of, the, of this tooth according to other tooth. We can make small corrections. Okay, now we finish the lateral incisors. Yes. And I will remove the rubber dam. And then I can take questions, I think. Yeah. Yes, we have 20 minutes. 17, so. 17 questions now. Oh, 17 questions. Okay. First, remove the retainer. And we need a tweezer. We're going to cut. Right, this okay. Yes. We need water. Yes. That's the result. It must be very good. But uh, for a proper evaluation, uh, you need at least one day because unfortunately, rubber dam can damage a little bit. Uh, the gingiva, and you have to wait, it's healing. Yes, that's the first day, as you see, very good restoration. Uh, in this restoration, unfortunately, we don't have very translucent. Yes, uh, can you see the translucency of a little bit translucency of inside the area? I don't know, but it's a little bit, it's not too much because we used to, sorry. <laughs> uh, Original tooth as a parrot wall. And also, it's close to the canine because we don't make uh, any restoration on canines. Okay.
Then after you took the rubber dam, you have to also check the occlusion and also uh, you have, you can uh, take the excessive bars with the fur and you can polish the approximate, sorry, palatal uh, area. But uh, now my patient is very tired. So uh, yeah, I want sure. uh, her to retire a, a little uh, for a time. And in the time I can answer the other questions, okay. Do you want to say it to patients also? Yeah, I don't know. Göremiyorsun ama görebildin mi? Tamam canım. Tamam. Tamam. Ben de Çok iyi oldu değil mi? I have to wash my hands first. Mikrofonu kapatalım o zaman. Arkadaşlar bir beş dakika olabilir sorulara geçer. Hello, can we just give five minutes, just break, then continue to the Q&A session, questions and answers. Uh, our professor, doctors and our patient, they are very tired at the moment. And I would like to thank to our patients, especially for being so patient there. And we will have five minutes break, then continue to the Q&A session, please don't leave the webinar. Thank you.
ses gelmiyor. Neden acaba? Ya, ya, ekran geliyor. Ya. Okay. <gülüyor> yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's yes, we <gülüyor> finished our restoration. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit hard case uh, because as I said before, it's really hard to find the proper um, case for online organization so <laughs> unfortunately uh, we could do uh, to any restoration that we could we could find okay. it's a large laminate restoration yeah, it's, it's really hard case also there's a little crowding in that area but the result is very good i think <laughs> uh, yeah good work Okay, uh, can you see the questions, Professor? Uh, just one ah. question. After I joined the program, oh, okay. I can see the other questions, unfortunately. Yeah, okay. So, uh, how come you speak? Like yeah, this? I can. I, unfortunately, I can see after an hour. The first hour, is there any question um, before six past, six past uh, three with our time zone? We have 11 questions. Uh, I can see 10. I think I just missed one, the first one. Okay. What's the first one you can see? Uh, the, the first question, uh, Manal Hussein. Uh, no, I can't see. I can okay. see the next how, one, how, I think. Nur how Ali. long for silicon to set? Sorry, I couldn't. Uh, how, how long for silicon to set? It depends on the uh, product. It depends on the brand. brand. Uh, in uh, this product, Generally, it takes two minutes, 30 seconds. Nearly. Okay. But also it depends the temperature of the environment. I am sending the next question to you directly and okay. also reading. I, actually, it's better if you read yourself, I think, isn't it? It's a question from Hakan Yıldırım. No, <laughs> it's me. <laughs> I just copied and passed it to you. <laughs> So the question. I, really died, so. <laughs> I have no idea what the question is about, honestly. Oh, okay. The question is from Nural Dean Ali El Mayali. Okay. Uh, how do the secondary and third anatomy, I think, after completing the uh, after completing the filling? Yes, mm, secondary anatomy and also tertiary anatomy. In secondary anatomy, yes. We use uh, discs or burrs, generally coarse or medium grained discs, uh, and generally mm, flame burrs for secondary anatomy. We generally try to give the shape and size uh, and also length of the tooth, the restoration, and we try to make line angles in secondary anatomy, no, in, sorry, it's for primary anatomy. In secondary anatomy, we prepare developmental groups and we make develop, developmental groups also by a flame with the help of the flame burrs. Uh, you have to make the grooves with little touch. It shouldn't be so deep. Uh, and you have to mm, make these grooves from incisal area to the cervical area with little touch. After that, you have to smooth it with rubbers or with the other abrasives. This is the procedure of the secondary anatomy. And for tertiary anatomy, also we use a flame burr, but we generally, I prefer a needle burr. And with burr, you have to make lines uh, by, uh, it's changing its direction. Uh, its direction uh, should be a little bit uh, vertical, but there should be a little bit an angle, like five degrees between uh, the restoration and your bird. And after that, you polish the restoration. If your guru, the uh, herkimati are deep, then you can smooth it with a abrasive. After that, you have to 
polish the surface. Okay, that's all. Okay. Um, there, there, there was a participant, so he wants to ask um, by himself. So I yeah. let you. Okay, Kerwan Hassan is mine, right? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, hello, <coughs> hello everyone. How, hello yeah, everybody. Hello. Yeah. hello. Doctor Esra, how are you? Good night. Uh, <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, I am a specialist restorative dentist uh, from Iraq, Arbil. Nice I to meet you. I have got an MSc master's of degree in the restorative dentistry. Oh, yes. Very good. Good. So uh, first of all, actually, uh, I have to appreciate you for a very uh, fantastic uh, presentations uh, in terms of the theory and also in terms of the uh, uh, live demonstration, live demo. But uh, one point actually I uh, have to talk about is the, uh, you know, smile line. Smile. Uh, yes. In terms of theory, when you are actually uh, wanting to uh, discuss the, the smile line, you say th th there is a high smile line, amount of the gingival show and the low smile line or the medium line smile line or the ordinary. But actually, in, in, on our live cases, something there is different, the environment different. For example, here in the lateral incisor cases you did today, you have to compare the lateral you, you are wanting to do with the contralateral side. Is that no. right? No, actually... I'm, just let, I, me, let me explain. So. No, I've, unfortunately, today I, I don't have a, a good reference. So uh, it's not the final... Uh, take this and final position uh, because uh, after I finish all the restoration, uh, I will yeah. address it to the others. Uh, generally, in the clinic, I start from the central incisors, uh, and uh, after I um, arrange their positions, their ex inclination axis, uh, then I do lateral incisors and also canines. I generally also uh, use backs up uh, for such cases, but uh, in this case, unfortunately, the uh, pre, uh, pre recruitments uh, have not finished, uh, just cannot treatment. So I also, I have li limited time. Uh, so also yeah, yeah. I choose no. the easiest one. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. No, uh, you didn't get my point, actually. For example, you, when you are uh, doing just a direct composite composite vini for only one tooth. Only for example, one. here, in the cases today, you did just for the lateral incisor teeth mm -hmm. on the right side. So when you when you finish the case, you have to exactly uh, have the lateral incisor on the right side, similar to the left side. Left side. You mm -hmm. have to compare with the contralateral side, so it's not to be something very ugly for the patient. Is that right? Uh, yes, also there is a restoration on lateral incisor. So yeah. uh, it's not possible in this case. Uh, in this case? In this case, not possible because uh, also there's a- I'm considering, I'm considering generally. I am considering generally. Generally, if uh, the shape and size of, of the contralateral uh, incisor is okay, then you can take it as a reference. Yes, but you have to take it as a reference Yes. To be uh, compared as contralateral side. For example, if you did ideally, as you uh, talked about in the theory, the left, right lateral, lateral incisor. If if you are uh, doing as an ideal shape, but on the contralateral side, on the right side, you have something else different from the left side. It will be something very different. That's why, if you have only one or two teeth direct composite being here, you have to compare it with the other side. Yeah. Yes, of course. You yeah. have to get a symmetry. Unfortunately, in one uh, restoration, you have to mimic the other. Also, mimic. Uh, yes, exactly. you have to mimic the other one, symmetrical one. It's really important, yeah. especially this is a very strict rule for central incisors. There can be small differences in lateral incisors or canines because, uh, yes, the patient can accept this, but the uh, central incisors should be 
very symmetric. Yes, it, it's been exactly, Ex exactly because actually uh, I did so many cases for my patient. When I uh, do two or three teeth, uh, my patient uh, always saying this uh, saying, please, why this teeth is longer than the other side? Why this teeth is smaller than that? Why this teeth is wider? Uh, this is an, uh, as uh, our literature also. We have to something that's compare. Right side, we have to compare with the left side as to mimic the nationalism with each other. Uh, Dr. Isra, uh, this is a very nice meeting to you actually. Uh, I didn't know you before, and now I uh, know you all, and Dr. Hakan also. Uh, thank you very much. Teşekkür ediyorum. Uh, and uh, çok güzel. Goodbye. Biz teşekkür, teşekkür ediyoruz. Thank you so much. Okay. <laughs> Goodbye. Nice to see you. I have Goodbye. to see you later. Inshallah. Inshallah. <laughs> have a nice time. Inshallah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I just sent the next question from Dr. Sarah to you. Dr. Sarai, if patient needs to replace all anterior restorations, then why you did only her retinal incisor? And what is the basic criteria for matrix selection when there's huge enamel loss? Okay, also that's a good uh, question. Yes, you're right, patient. Uh, I plan to make five direct video restoration for that patient, but unfortunately we have limited time. And uh, I'm, just, I'm not just making the restoration here also, I have to explain what I did. Uh, so it's really hard uh, in a limited time. So I just make one restoration. And what is the basic criteria for matrix selection? Yes. Uh, basic, I generally, uh, I generally prefer metal matrices uh, for also anterior uh, restorations because it is, their stabilization is better. So uh, they, because uh, they preserve their shape, but uh, strip mattress uh, easily deform and uh, the, their contour can easily be changed. So I prefer, as I said before, generally metal matrices. You can use the bent off sectional mattress if you want, but uh, in this case, you have to use two bent uh, for distal and for mesial side, May maybe together it's be better. And uh, this is not easy way. The easy way is use just one matrix band. It's so I <laughs> use Unica matrix system in this case. It has a really good counter uh, for pull the approximate and also cervical area. Uh, and also I use the in this case rubber dam isolation. Uh, so uh, it's not important for this case because uh, we won't encounter blooding problem in when we use rubber dam. But if you don't use rubber dam, then uh, to make a frame around the restoration is a good, very good, I think, option also to make a good isolation from the gingival fluid and uh, any blood from the gingiva, the blooding of gingiva. Uh, also section of mat, uh, in, in this case, unica anterior will be a good choice for the operator. Okay, that's okay. All right. I just sent the next one from Ahmed Goda to you directly. Okay, from chat. From question answer. From the chat, you, you will from, see from the chat. From the Ahmed chat. Goda, thank, thank you, doctor. Thank you, doctor. Did you place dental shade then opacer than dental shade? Then translucent shade is if that true why we don't place translucent shade directly over opacer. Uh, I I use dental shade. Uh, in some products, dental shade is also called uh, opaque shade, but uh, it's completely different from the opacers. Opacers are very very um, opaque shade. Yes. So I, I use the dentin shade, but it's called opaque in that product, A2 opaque. And then dentin shade, then translucent shade, yes. Because uh, there's a dentin loss, especially under, there was a dentin loss on the mesial side in that case. So I used uh, the, for a dentin tissue loss, the best alternatives 
alternative is a dental shape to achieve the to replace its opacity. I mean, uh, and I made small mammals at that area, and uh, to make these mammals more prudent, more evident, more clear, I used translucent shade between the these mammals. Then I applied a thin layer of enamel shade over this surface, and after that, I used um, translucent shade on the incisal area. It's, I think it's a good sample of layering technique. <laughs> okay, thank you for all. <laughs> and also there is more questions. There's a question from- You can see in chat. You can yes. see the questions in Abdullahi chat. Abdullahi Mohammed, can you share with us the best composites for veneer aesthetic? Yes, it, such kind of questions are frequently asked to me, which composite is the best? I think there's no best composite in the dental market. <laughs> yes, there are lots of composites and uh, they have all proper mechanical and aesthetic properties. But uh, the difference is mainly um, on their some characteristics, some features like polymerization shrinkage, handling, uh, handling also very, and also uh, polishability sometimes is is used in one of com brand compared to other and also its thickness like this the main and also especially in shades uh, their shades are completely different the shade also uh, the shade and opacity also are completely different from one brand to another and unfortunately also uh, it can be different from one brand to another in the uh, that belongs to the same company. But unfortunately, I couldn't say this material is the best. They all have some advantage and also some still have some disadvantages. But there, there are lots of good composites in the market. You have to use them, you have to try them, and you have to choose the proper one for you. And also it's really important I think it's a critical point to know the all properties of your composites before you use this set. It's opacity, it's trade, and also um, it's the other properties. Uh, you can use a reference set for this. Uh, for example, the composite I uh, started, I, the composite that I use when I started the uh, veneer restoration is my reference composite, composite resin. I started to make such kind of restorations nearly uh, 12 years old, years ago. And in, at that time, I started to make such composite with a brand. And this brand is a reference for me. I always compare the other composites with this brand to especially understand their shade and opacity difference. Okay. And the other question, Ahmed Huda, did we place opacer in incisal third? Uh, in incisal third, generally we don't use uh, dentin shades and also we, yes, sorry. In incisal third, we don't use opaces generally, but if there is a severe discoloration in that area, and if you have to mask this discoloration, you can use also opacers in the incisal area. Uh, we generally use dentin shades very thin in incisal area for uh, just make some mammalons, uh, uh, but generally uh, the big amount is composed of translucent or enamel shade. Oh or maybe standard shade, but not dental shade. Just little amount for mammals. Yes. Did we do cutback only in butt joint? Uh, you know, in that case, we, don't, we, we didn't use butt joint. We use uh, federage technique. Yeah, did, actually 
the preparation is unique for this case uh, because we have a cavity on mesial surface and on mesial surface we have a cavity like uh, class dot. On distal surface, we used feather edge, this uh, finish line, not butt joint, it's feather edge. We, I, I didn't make any reduction in the incisal, on the incisal edge, in the distal area. I used the uh, tooth as a palatal wall. But in mesial surface, there was a cavity, there was ultra restoration, there was a cavity. So uh, we filled this cavity. Okay, did we do cut back on the in -between? Yes, but we do cut back generally on the inside of one tooth. Uh, yes, better doing preparation with or without rubber dam. Uh, I generally use rubber dam isolation, but if the gingiva is healthy and you have limited time, and also you have unicometry system, I mean the metric system that uh, can um, uh, that can fr make a frame around the tooth. In this situation, uh, you also you can also do. Composite, you can also make composite veneers without, without rubber dam isolation. It's up to you, but I generally use rubber dam isolation. Thank you very much, Hatija. Actually, she, she was also one of my students. <laughs> I um, so I, I would say hello to Hatija. Hatija Archetin, the professor, thank you very much for sharing your knowledge and it's on this topic with us. Uh, thank you, Hatija, also for your kind attention and for uh, following us. See you later okay ahmed gauda did final shape needed is affected by dentin opaque so i mean opaque not opacer opaque did final shape needed is affected by dentin yes shade generally the dentin shade is the essential shape and generally uh, it's uh, first determined uh, yes in the final shape so dentin shade is the first deter determinant in the final shade. But also standard shade and enamel shade uh, gives, uh, is especially enamel shade, it's uh, translucency. Another question, is there a unique veneer composite for? <laughs> Yes, uh, I use uh, some brands, and uh, yes, they are. Uh, I get very satisfactory results with these brands. But uh, I can say that also Ceramco is a good option for uh, cool anterior restoration. As you see, you can get very <clears throat> uh, good uh, color match and translucency uh, and natural looking results with Serum. How long for silicone to set? Yes, uh, it depends on the brand, uh, but generally in this brand, it, it's two minutes and two seconds. Uh, dear Professor Hatija Ayşetin, dear Professor, when you have a patient, who insists on his her own wishes on exact length or shape, even if it's not suitable theoretically and visually. Would you continue with patient's wishes or would you recommend a different treatment choice? Sorry for a prolonged question, but sometimes patients get upset when the truth is told. Thank you a lot again. Thank you so much, <clears throat> Hatice. And yes, uh, it exact length or shape. I generally I make some recommendations to patients, but if the patient insists on, and uh, if uh, it is suitable, I mean, it's suitable uh, in terms of function, also, uh, I can, uh, in this situation, I prefer to make restorations according to the patient wishes. Because in aesthetic treatment, to make the patient happy, to make their desires also is important. Uh, aesthetic, I'm, unfortunately, aesthetic means different things from one, one patient to another or from a, a person to another. So we have to also consider our patient's wishes in making all full aesthetic restorations. 
Uh, where can we get more information about the groups and how to choose the proper one for us? Thank you for your kind explanation and this great presentation. Thanks so much also for uh, following us and for your kind attention. Yes, there are lots of um, articles also about loops, uh, and you can find uh, it for instance when you uh, you also use Google uh, database, basic database. Uh, yes, I prefer customized one, exam vision. I think uh, it's a very, very good loop. Uh, I use nearly 3.3 magnification. Uh, I think it's enough for restorative dentistry, but for just uh, for just getting a vision from a special place, you can also use uh, high magnifications, like up to six or now I think 10 magnification for loops. There, there are 10 magnification loops. But for restorative dentistry, I think uh, 2.5 to 4.5 will be enough for you because uh, generally uh, we have to also uh, we have to also see one than more uh, more than one teeth when we're making a aesthetic restoration composite restoration in restorative dentistry thank you so much we have finished the questions. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Because I'm a little, a little bit tired here, really. Making a practical presentation uh, is, yes, better than it's, <laughs> making it's a not, it's, it's not easy. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not easy. It's been more than three hours. Wow. So as a, as a patient, normally myself, I was just feeling very exo exhausted and impatient there but from now on I won't say anything to my dentist so it is more exhausting <laughs> more tiring for you as well so I'm not saying anything anymore I'm just waiting there it's no morning nothing <laughs> it's a very difficult job live patient I think is a very <laughs> very uh, interesting experience yeah it was very interesting experience for me because yes uh, in a live patient Unfortunately, you can encounter some problems, and you have to notice all these problems. <laughs> I don't, yeah, I don't. You have. I don't think. Yeah, I don't think many people just was treated in front of so many people. <laughs> just just got her teeth and waited for a long time. Uh, I, I I'm just wondering what she will think when she watched this back again for herself. So her okay. teeth and then showing to hundreds. <laughs> oh yes, showing to hundreds. <laughs> Thank, thank you, you very much. Uh, yes, thank you. So, uh, thank you also so much. Really, it was a great experience for me. For uh, I would like to thank to for both Nesbridge Academy for their invitation and support, and for Serenco. We would like to day. thank you so thank much, you. Uh, <laughs> Professor Estra, for this uh, really inspiring um, treatment, online treatment, and also to whole team there, the, the our patients. Uh, professor, the, the, this is helping you, the, the, our dentists and it's all team there. And uh, yeah, and also, yes, as Nice British Academy, we are happy to be organizing this. And again, I'm just saying this in brackets, if you would like to come to the UK as a dentist or dental care <laughs> professionals, so just write info to <laughs> info at kbac.uk. And thank you to Saramco as well. Thanks again, everybody. Thank you for attending. Thanks for your patience. And we hope to see you in the future events all together from Nicebridge. Dr. Blant, do you have anything to say to us? No, thank you very much. Just uh, yeah, uh, only one thing I can say, um, very big. Um, and thank you for uh, Professor Estra because it is really a hard job <clears throat> um, and speaking talking about the patient and uh, managing everything around and um, making the treatment. It is really a hard job. So thank you very much for you and uh, for all the team there. Because uh, there is a big team in the clinic now, but, uh, I know. So <laughs> thank you. Very much. Yes. Uh, it's yeah, a yeah. good teamwork. So you, you, you go for dinner now. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you to uh, Dr. Bekir Joogo, <laughs> because yeah. he assisted me well <laughs> during the process. Yeah.
Yes, I, he played very well as well. I, I can see that. <laughs> he very well. <laughs> he's, he's, I know, he's in him. He's in him. He's an actor. He played very well then. <laughs> okay, then, time okay. to go. Thank you. Okay, hope to meet you next time. Hope to see you then. Thank, Thank you. you. Good evening.